one accord, a mystery. Father God, in the mighty name of thy son, we ask you to open our hearts, our minds, our souls, to hear your word, to transform our minds to the reality of life, the spirit, and who you are, and things to come. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. One accord, a mystery. Definition, if a number of people doing something with one accord, they do it together or at the same time because they agree about what should be done, literally, in a united way. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51 and 52. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, as the last trumpet, for the last trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be rise, incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 30. A twinkling of the eye means in the heart a good news makes you feel fit as a fill. Mystery, something that is difficult or impossible to understand or explain. The mystery of the outer space, something not understood or beyond understanding. Like many forensics or detectives, the mystery of his disappearance has never been solved. In other words, it's going to be difficult for us to understand it, for it to be explained, but it's something so simple, so quick, so unique, so fabulous, so amazing to us, yet ordained by God. There's absolutely nothing we can give God on this earth besides ourselves, not our flesh or blood, only our spirits, our soul. That's what he's coming back for. Orchestras play one accord. The choir sings in one accord. We will be transformed instantly with no time to think what's going on. It'll happen quicker than we blink our eyes, quicker than we speak and think and move and see. Because it's God coming back for us, not us coming back or being taken by ourselves and for our family. We're going back to the one who created us, where we belong, where he wants us, where he loves us. God has always cried and pleaded enough, numerous, endless times. We have read it throughout the Bible. We have experienced throughout our lives. We all know where he doesn't want us to be, where there's no death in the lake of fire, in the arms of hell, in the fury of God's anger. Satan doesn't own hell. God created it. We're not going to get away from it that easy. It's not a death to the unknown. It's a death to endless brimstones of fire, crying, you're going to feel it, gnashing of teeth, grinding. You think if, head, uh, if Satan was allowed to have his, create his own hell, it would be partying and fun. It's ultimately God's anger for the millions and zillions of years that we're here on earth. How much more does anybody want from him? How much more does he want? Want We want to wait. All right. It's not like a day in the beach and you get a bad sunburn. It's not like feeling creepy crawler. It says wailing, that's crying, anguish. It's something horrible. This is why he knows. This is why he pleads for us to be saved. We have to will it. That God doesn't play a magician's game. He doesn't go back on his word. It will happen. The only thing we can do is save ourselves, is to repent from sin, is to proclaim and believe that Jesus is Lord, that he came, that I believe he saved me from all my deadly sins on earth. He's a loving God, but he's also a jealous God. He doesn't get angered. He does get angered at the foolish of his creation, worshiping other gods, other things. Yes, he's merciful. We have to turn from our wicked ways, the way we think, the way we walk, the way we act. Psalms 30, verse 5. His anger is for a moment in time. His favor is for life. 
For them that love him, it's only for a moment in time. Till we repent, till we actually realize the truth, the reality and who he is. Not for those that continue in wickedness and foolishness, knowing and still doing and continuing. The Bible says that whom he loves, he corrects, he chastises, as a mother tells her child, don't touch it, pow pow. A lake is a body of water surrounded on all sides of land. Some or most people will tell you, can you imagine? But I'm telling you, don't imagine, just know that it's true, a lake of fire. When you turn on a stove, whether it's a square or round iron gates, grates or ceramic glass, it's surrounded by fire and we control how low or high we want our pot and what's cooking in it. Well, hell has no control. It's a furnace all around, top to bottom, not head to toe, not side to side, not inches, not by feet, not by a sea, a lake, not a flowing, lively lake, a nonstop standstill fire, endless. Revelations 1 verse 18 says, I am the living one. I was dead and now look, I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death in Hades. Hades is hell as we call it. Jesus' flesh died to the world, but his spirit never died. This is how he was able to go to hell and get the keys and power. We saw him die fleshly, but he gave his spirit to God. In thy hands, I commend my spirit. He was still working in about his father's business in those days before the resurrection. It's only God who can turn the trick of a snake to the victory in God's glory. Let me say that again. It's only God who can turn the trick of a snake to the victory in God's glory. Luke 23, verse 46. Then Jesus called out in a loud voice, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. In a loud voice because it took all of his strength with his last breath. God is still moving and working. Jesus is still moving and working in the spirit. As the Holy Spirit, who is our comforter, is moving and working in us. Let me say that again. God is still working and moving. Jesus is still moving and working in the spirit as the Holy Spirit, who is our comforter, is moving and walking in us. Matthew 13, verse 42. They will throw them into the blazing fire, into the furnace. They will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You know how people grind in their sleep, gnashing because it's going to be that horrific and fire and death that you're going to feel 24 hours that we call on earth, but it's endless there. To whom the Lord loveth, he chastised and scourges every son whom he receiveth. This is Hebrew 12 verse 6. Because he loves us, he corrects us. He helps us. He guides us. He directs our steps to whom he receives those that are saved, those that are looking for him, those that come to him whom he receives. There's no stopping God when he loves you. When you are saved, he cleanses you from the inside out. He opens your ears to hear, your eyes to see, your heart to know. He corrects us, whatever it takes him to work in us and not us in us. Some days we can take the ups and downs and trials and tribulations and test after test. And other times we want to give up. But in the midst of all that, he lets us know that he's there, that he will strengthen us. God loves you. God loves me. He really, really loves us. We have to believe and know that it's true. The Holy Spirit intervenes and will confirm God's word. The truth in the Bible brings out the life in us. Therefore, the truth on how real hell is shakes us to the bone and puts the fear of God in us. The fear of God in a good way because it provokes knowledge and wisdom. 
anything and everything that comes from him is a good, good, a mighty good thing. How true death is, how true judgment is after death. Revelations 20, verse 10. And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of burning sulfur where the beasts and the false prophets had been thrown. They will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Therefore, Satan will be the last to be thrown into the lake of fire. Satan has limited power. He's not as strong, as powerful as we fear and think because the word is telling you he will be cast, thrown. God has authority over him in the underworld and the principalities above us in higher places. We're thinking worldly. Are we going to have clothes on or people fearing when Jesus comes, what would it feel like? All that is fleshly thoughts that's in our minds, thinking, fearing. We're not supposed to fear ever. Have you ever in a weirdly, worldly, fearful way heard like a big alarm, a big thunder or a loud horn? Have you ever paused completely frozen like animals when they're about to be ambushed by the lions running to them? or an elephant in the jungle? Have you ever looked up and was dumbfounded, frozen for a few seconds and said to yourself in a loud, alarming sound, this horn, this noise, oh my God, that's Jesus. That's God, he's coming back. There's a fear of reverence and acknowledgement that God is true. Then there's a fear of someone shocked, not wanting him to come because they thought they still had time to be saved or time to get it right. And all the while we came to find out that it wasn't, it was just a loud noise, a loud sound. And I'm not talking about the emergency broadcast that you hear that big beep on the TV. And it is absolutely annoying. I'm talking about like a trumpet or a sound. Nevertheless, it's not something that we're going to know, like when people know that they're passing away or like when we know that we're coming down with a cold. The Bible says that not even the Son of God knows the day or the hour. Matthew 24, verse 36. No one knows about that day or hour, not even the angels in heaven know the Son, but only the Father. As it was in the days of Noah, so will it be in the coming of the Son of Man. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. Hebrews 10, verse 25. Not giving up meetings together, as some are in the habit of doing, but be encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. First Thessalonians chapter 5, Verse 16 through 18, rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ. The will of God in Christ, the will of Christ in us. Let me say that again. The will of God in Christ, the will of Christ in us. In other words, keep going to church Keep going to prayer meetings. Keep having gatherings together in unity and love. Uplifting each other. Keeping hope alive. Saving lives for God, with God, and by God. Family members, keep bringing the chicken and the mac and cheese. Keep rejoicing. Keep singing. Don't get frustrated. Don't give up. He gave us the clue in the verse. And when you see the times as it was in the days of Noah, when life becomes worse than what we think is happening now, then you know that God is at the verge and saying enough and telling his son to come for us. Don't get nervous. Don't have that fear look on your face. It will be a joyous day because we are part of God's spirit. God is tranquil. He has timeless music. There is singing, praising, and we love to do it, and they love to do it. Like when we pray to God and we kneel, it is our pleasure. It's joy. 
Because in the presence of God, there is happiness. The peace of God will not have us crying. Be happy. Like when we kneel down and pray, it is our pleasure. And when we stand and pray, it is our treasure. It's something we love to do. So how much more is it going to be when he comes for us? It is God's joy and the joy within us to be reunited with our King, our Father, our Creator, our Savior with his breath. With Jesus, last breath on earth, he fought for us. And with his breath that he's still alive, we will be with him in higher places. This is a spiritual event. This is the best vacation you could ever want for your mind, heart, and soul. We are and belong to God. He told us not to fear. Who cares if you can't dance? We're going to the grand ballroom ballroom and where any movement is a dance in the presence of our king in the presence of our savior there's going to be joy there's going to be glory i don't need nothing that i own on earth and we're not gonna have it either it's not a supermarket sweep grab everything you can before he comes and hold on to it when he takes us absolutely not we have no control of that. Like we have no control when we're going to die in the form that we're going to die or the reason that we're going to die or when and where we're going to die. Ephesians 4 verse 8 through 9. For it is by grace you have been saved through the faith and not your own or by ourselves and not this from yourself. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boost, boast. God knows that before his grace saved us, we were conceited beings. He knows that we are selfish and many are lovers of themselves. This is why everything in the world is a gift from God. So that you don't brag about things and we do not, things that we did not create or do. Boastful. We like to praise ourselves too much. Many famous people in government honored God. Many have prayed in secret places before they became elevated and now have forgotten of God. When God took Elijah in a whirlwind of fire, his cloak fell down. God doesn't want anything that he created in this world. What he has is better like when he dressed Adam and Eve from fig leaves to animal skin. God made sure Elijah's cloak fell down for a reason and a purpose. There's no man created items going into glory. He has what we need, what we ever wanted. Just like Jesus said, I must go to prepare a place for you. It's already there. And if I go prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. John chapter 14, verse 3. How beautiful that Jesus came for us. His hope is having us with him. Jesus died for us. Jesus went home into heaven with his father, preparing for when we gather with him, that wherever he is, he wants us to be with him, whether on earth or in heaven. This is how much God loves us. Not only that he gave us his son and sacrifice with every drip of his blood that is still alive. That he cried for us on earth. That is still saving and healing. He wants us with him. He doesn't reject us. He's welcoming us. Open your heart, open your ears to hear because faith comes by hearing. When you hear the word of God, it feeds you and transforms you. It gives you thought to provoke prayer, to provoke talking, to provoke learning more. He knows the outcome of everything. He knows the reality of hell. 
God doesn't want anyone to die and perish. This is not like when you break your bones and you have to wear a cast. This is not like when you cut yourself and a band-aid will heal your wound. It's much more than that. Open your heart and let God's spirit in it to hear it and believe it for yourself. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Romans 10 verse 2 Kings chapter 2, 11 through 13. And as they were walking along and talking together, suddenly a chariot of fire with horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them. And Elijah went into heaven in a whirlwind. As Elijah watched, he cried, my father, my father, the chariots and the horsemen of Israel. And he saw Elijah no more. So taking hold of his own clothes, and he tore them in two. Elijah also picked up the cloak that had fallen from Elijah. How beautiful is it to be taken up by God suddenly in a whirlwind, a wind of fire, with chariots of fire, with horses of fire. Fire from God almost always represents the Holy Spirit. God's very own presence, his own, and fire in hell, brimstones of fire, a furnace of fire, sulfur. Genesis 3, verse 21, and the Lord God made clothing from animal skins for Adam and his wife. Remember, God is the coolest, the calmest being. God is better than our meditation, than our yoga session. There is no seven days a week, 24 hours, 365 days in heaven. He will be our tranquility. He himself will be that great song, the best Christmas we ever had, the tears you will never see again, the human pain, the hurt we will never feel again, mentally, physically, and emotionally. So that quote that people say, I can forgive, but I'll never forgive, forget. And other ones say, I can't forgive or forget. That will be broken, smashed and thrown away. There is no time out in heaven. There is no, I don't want to see my enemy there. Those feelings will be gone. God said we have to forgive our enemies. There is no attitude, no mood swings in heaven. There is no checkout. Well, I think I'll go back to heaven. You'll go back to hell. This is why God said, I will take revenge on your enemies. So keep killing them with kindness. Let God keep them blinded or keep trying to save them because only God knows their story and not us. Romans 12, verse 17 through 19. Behold, do not avenge yourself, but rather give place to wrath, for it is written, Revenge is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. We will never feel that hurt again. It's not going to be like, Welcome to Fine Tissy Island, where little tattoo will be saying, De Blaine, De Blaine. This will not be a robotic form like I, Robot with Will Smith. Luke 2, verse 8 to 20. Remember when the angels of the Lord appeared to the shepherds? And there were shepherds living out in the field nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in cloth, lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. 
clues. Did you capture that suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angels of the Lord praising God? Did you capture to those on whom his favor rests? What is favor? It's not the tap on the shoulder, you're doing great. It's not income, more income in our paycheck. It's him, God himself, the glory of his spirit, his presence with us, around us, on us. It said the glory of God shone on them. The shepherds reverenced and feared. They honored, they acknowledged with humbleness. Proverbs first chap, uh, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 17. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. When we see it, when we know it, when we feel it. It's like that favorite song that never ends and never gets old. It's that like that weekly treat that we treat ourselves from fr Friday to Sunday. Only God is better than all of that. The verse said the angel of the Lord, and I will tell you this, we are of the Lord. Let me say that one again. The angel of the Lord, and I will tell you, we are of the Lord. We are God's chosen people and suddenly we will be caught up with him. We need to focus on the meantime till suddenly happens is keep loving, keep learning, keep spreading the word and keep saving people for God's glory. That's what he wants us to do. Throughout the entire Bible, from beginning to end, even Jesus said it many times, fear not because God knows and God knows we fear, we tremble at his presence and we should, of course. But he means it also to keep it humble. Keep your heart pure in the presence of God in this human body form. This is why he says fast so we can connect spirit to spirit because in the flesh, we won't have strength in our bodies. This body cannot contain God's glory. We have no choice but to bow down and lay before him. We become numb at the presence of his beauty. So how much more will it be on that great hour? This flesh cannot be taken up in the heavens. This is why we will be transformed quickly, just like Elijah's cloak fell. This flesh will be falling, transform, traumatic change in the form, appearance, or character of. Corrupted, this body, this flesh, polluted, stained, wickedness. We were saved and cleansed inside, but a UV light will still show the sins on the flesh. Let me say that again. We were saved and cleansed inside, but a UV light will still show the sins on the flesh. God's fury vision with his fury eyes sees straight through us. Doctors use x-rays and CAT scan or MRIs to see what's going on in our bodies to diagnose the problem, but God sees straight to our heart. The Lord does not look at things people look at. People look the outward appearance, but the Lord looks straight to the heart. 1 Samuel 16, verse 7. Hebrews 4, chapter 12. For the Lord, for the word of God is a living and effective and sharper than any two double-edged sword. God sees straight to our soul and spirit, our bones, our intentions within our hearts. In other words, we as well, in the armor of God, the sword is the word of God that penetrates, it's sharp. It has power to determine and see by his direction how someone's intention and what they're telling us, our enemies as Satan who target us. God will give us discernment. God will let us see strict to the root of it all. We don't need Superman x-ray vision. We got God's provision. He will give us discernment. It's a gift of the spirit. It's a gift in the armor of the Lord. Ephesians 6. 
verse 10. The armor of the God, the whole entire armor. Transform, your spirit will be elevated. We are corrupted in this uniform. This flesh is corrupted. God got your size, our perfect form, spirit to spirit. There will be no more extra small to extra large. There will be no more tiny size to plus size. There will be no more tallest man on earth to the shortest woman on earth. We will just be that sweet spirit, that sweet whisper from the foundation of the earth that he spoke to our spirits. We will just be one accord, one God, one son, one Holy Spirit, one of us with all of him. Amen? Amen. It's going to happen so fast. We won't even be able to think of people. God is the spirit and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. He will come back for those that are in Christ. We have a covenant with God. We have an agreement with God. We have salvation with God. He doesn't take back his word or gifts he's given on earth spiritual gifts and earthly gifts this is why he pleases with pleads with us to repent he doesn't want us to be cast and thrown into hell it says they will be thrown they threw this could be god's legions of battled ready angels throwing them it could be jesus himself but it says they will throw them he will help us through it to overcome its trials and tribulations on earth. John 4, 23 to 24. But the hour has come and now when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Did you hear that he seeketh, he's looking, who can he use? Who can he find? Who can he hear? Who is praying, talking, worshiping him? Where are you? He's looking for you. He's looking for me. As always, I like to say, get out of the flesh and get into the spirit. And believe me, it's hard even for me every single day. And I say that sincerely, truthfully, God alone knows. God wants us to honor him spirit to spirit, not while we're stuffed and full and ready for bed or to watch TV. But if we can put him before, while our minds are clear and not hungry, feed, feed to feed our bodies. Let's get hungry to feed our souls, to love him. Give him back what he wants. Give him back his word. Give him back his truth. Give him back love. You know how we hear on TV shows or award shows, can we show them some love? Or oh, where are my people at? Well, can we show God love? If you can't think of something to say or something, we get nervous or how to talk or pray to God. Start with God. I know you're real. I know you're there. I know it's you and only you that looks out for me. You protect me even when I don't know how to. Find a perfect scripture that touches your heart and read it back to him. Give him back that feeling. Give him back that joy. Give him back that trust. Give him back his word. Give him the love he deserves. That's all he ever wanted. That's all he ever asked. That's all he ever prayed. That's all he ever cried. Jesus said, forgive them for they know not what they do. He knew we're bound by the world we're blinded he knows we are foolish he knows we didn't care or understand but god if you can forgive them they know not what they do they know not what they did jesus cried with his last breath he didn't come back to lock to life pop and locking he didn't do the break dance. He didn't do the bachata. He didn't slide to the left and then to the right. He didn't do the salsa or the bachata. I meant to say he didn't do the cha-cha-cha, sliding to the left and to the right. He came back to life with the same word he died with. Let me say that again. He came back to life with the same word he died with. The same love that he died with, the same thought that he died with for you, for me, for God's people. 
He didn't even come back here for himself. He was not selfish or greedy. He didn't show off his God-given gifts. He came back for God, by God. He never told God, no. He never said, I can't do that. You want me to die for those people that don't know you or me? He just did as the Father asked. He knew that greater is the gift in being obedient to God and his glory than denying or lying or hiding or saying no. God is coming for us, those that are close to his heart, those that can believe in Christ, those that are in the book of life. So therefore, until anybody's last breath, you cannot say you're going to, to damnation. Who are you? God doesn't want anyone to perish. You don't know how true hell is. It's not a cartoon figment. It's real. Like when you see a firefighter putting out the burning fire, this is why it's so hard to believe in God or why is it so hard to believe in God? He provides, he heals, he saves. He has healed us through our scars, through our wounds, through our many hidden circumstances that we do not tell anyone the things we have done for the fear of judgment and hatred and death. It's only God who can take it, no matter how bad it is. He can and will turn it around for the better person in us. What he placed within before the foundation of earth. We survived and we're still surviving each day. Some days are worse. Some days it's the why me. Some days I can't take it and some days I enjoy. God's not taking you because you're in the 12 signs of the Syriac. God's not taking you because you're Hispanic, American, African American, Indian, Japanese, Chinese, or Arabic. Not because your skin color is brown, black, white, or beige. Not even because your favorite earth color is to wear is green, blue, red, or pink. He's not taking you because what you've done on earth, it's not about the money. It's not about the honey. It's not about a nickel or dime. God has taken us because we are redeemed by the blood of Christ. Because God keeps his promise from the days of Genesis to Noah, to the covenant, Abraham, Isaac, Joshua, David. God is a promise keeper. He is the one and only I am my brother's keeper. This is not the little mermaid where Ursula steals your soul. We were created from God and those that are his and those that love him and those that believe and know the covenant. We shall be with him again. Psalms 116 verse 2. Because he bends down to listen, I will pray as long as I have breath. God hears the prayers of his people, those that are his those that love him, those that say, Lord, with every breath, not with every breath that I can, but with every breath, because you hear me, because you strengthen me, because it's your breath. God also waits to hear the ones he doesn't know or has never heard a prayer. And then suddenly, in a twinkle of an eye, and then suddenly, in a twinkle of an eye, in a moment, he hears a cry that he has never heard before. He stops the heavens and earth and bends over to hear the cry of the unknown. So don't wait till it's too late. Don't wait and say, I'll do it later. Because only now, right now, this moment for you, this word is for you. And all we have is now. I will end with this, Philippians chapter 2, verse 10 and 11, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, and those in heaven, and those on earth, and those under the earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Remember, in one accord, we will be taken up. And in one accord, when our Savior returns, when we see him in all his glory, everything on earth and under the earth and in heaven will proclaim and bow down that Jesus is Lord 
the glory of God the Father. It begins with God and it shall end with God. But of course, for those who love him, it'll be our pleasure, it'll be our joy. But for those that don't and those that hate him, including Satan himself, will proclaim and bow down and say, Jesus is Lord. So why wait to be forced? Because it surely will happen. For anyone that has never loved, known him, will bow down. Why not learn and love him now? Save yourself and proclaim that beautiful name now. We're living in a time and age that all we have is now. This is Mother of Fire. Father God, for them that have heard, transform and change and save. You said you will never reject us. You will never leave us alone. You, will, you do not want us to be perished, Father. We want to be with you in one accord in love and unity.